You know, horror movies are not always scary. They can be also badass. I'm talking about some action. Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 favorite action horror movies, in my opinion. Yes, I guess in my other videos, horror movies can be romantic. Funny, <laughs> but they also could be bad freaking ass. I'm talking action, action explosions, blood, guts everywhere. I'm talking about action movies. They're good. They're enjoyable. They're entertaining. I think romantic horror films and comedic horror films are more enjoyable, especially to watch during the Halloween season. But you know what? Action horror films are a lot of fun to watch too. And I'm going to count down my favorites. This is my top 10 personal, personal favorite action horror movies. All right, let's get to it. And for our top 10 list, you gotta have your honorable mentions. And my honorable, and my honorable mentions are World War Z, Underworld, Dog Soldiers, Purge Anarchy, 28 Weeks Later, Blade 2, and Hellboy. All very enjoyable action horror films. Just give me the top 10 list, but we didn't make my top 10, was my number 10. My number 10 is Planet Terror. Yeah, Planet Terror. This is part of the Grindhouse films, and actually, I kind of enjoy this a little bit more than Death Proof. And I like Death Proof, even though it is the weakest Quentin Tarantino film. I enjoy it for what it is, and I think it's enjoyable. Kurt Russell makes that whole film. He's amazing. But I like Planet Terror. Planet Terror was really, really cool to watch, and it's a Robert, Robert Rodriguez film, and it is so ridiculous and over the top, it's amazing. You got Rose McGowan as a girl named Cherry, and she has a machine gun for a leg. That's what kind of movie you're in for. It's a mutant invasion. It's not a zombie invasion. It is a mutant invasion led by Bruce Willis. Yeah, Bruce Willis. And you got Quentin Tarantino playing a guy who tries to rape Rose McGowan and his balls fall off because he's all mutated. Yeah, this is just weird, but this is enjoyable. It's an enjoyable movie. You got Freddy Rodriguez in the film. You got Josh Brolin in the film. Again, Rose McGowan, who's a badass chick named Cherry with a machine gun for a leg. It's all you need, right? It's got blood, guts, it's silly, it's ridiculous, it's over the top. It's a lot of fun. Coming number nine is Blade. Yes, the very first Blade film. Yes, some motherfuckers always try to ski uphill. Is that how the quote goes? Is it motherfuckers try to skate uphill or ski uphill? Oh, who the gives a shit? Who gives a shit? Uh, Blade, awesome. Leslie Snipes, he plays in a good movie. He doesn't play in a lot of great films, but he was awesome in Blade. Blade 2 was good, too. The game with Alternal 1, but I like the first Blade. I like how silly and cheesy and ridiculous it is. The violence, it's awesome. It's one of the first, like, R, hard R comic book movies, and it's really fun to watch. Leslie Snipes is enjoyable. The characters are enjoyable. The villain is ridiculous, and he's freaking awesome. Some. It's got some pretty cool visuals. It's a bit dated. The beginning first act, how this movie begins, is very creepy and unsettling. And it does have that horror vibe because it's vampires and these are really twisted vampires. But it has the badass action. It's well executed. It's got some really cool action scenes. Wesley Snipes is great. And yeah, it's just a really enjoyable film. And it's a great action horror film. Coming number eight is Army of Darkness. Yes, this is the third installment of the Evil Dead franchise. And yeah, Evil Dead 1 and 2, they're enjoyable, mostly comedic horror films. This is comedy too, but this is a straight action film too. This is action comedy horror. Again, this embraced the insanity of what Evil Dead was. And Bruce Campbell, Chainsaw Hand, goes back in time to the medieval ages, saves these people so he can go back to the, you know, his own time in the 80s and stuff. And it is incredible. This movie is so silly, so over the top, but it's bad freaking ass. It's freaking Bruce Campbell kicking some freaking ass groovy. <laughs> this is just awesome. Everything about it's awesome. The practical effects, the cool action scenes, Bruce Campbell's over the top acting is amazing. It's entertaining. One of the best. Coming number seven is Dawn of the Dead. Yes, both versions. I'm going to do both versions. Yes, both the Zack Schneider one that came out in, two, in the early 2000s and the George A. Romero uh, 1970s version. Both are great, enjoyable, fun movies. They're also great action movies. They both have the same premise about these people surviving the zombie apocalypse and they barricade themselves in a mall to survive against the zombies. I, uh, this action Dead one is a lot more fun because it's so violent and over the top and everything. And you got like Vin Rhymes kicking some serious ass. Vin Rhymes is amazing in that movie. But the original is a little better. It's a little more spookier, a little more creepier. It got more eeriness to it. And I like the practicality more. 
And I think both versions are good, both are enjoyable to watch, and yeah, they're both awesome. Coming number six is one of my favorite Joel Schumacher films, which isn't saying much, but hey, he made some good movies, and one of his best ones is The Lost Boys. The Lost Boys is a great vampire film, great coming-of-age story, and a really great action movie. Like, there's some really kick-ass action scenes in this film, and it is so fun. Basically, a teenager trying to fit in, and he fits in with some vampires, led by Kiefer Sutherland, who is awesome in this film. You also got a very young Corey Feldman in this movie. It's bloody, it's gory, it's over the top, it's got teenagers killing some people, it's about vampires killing some vampires, hunting vampires, it's just awesome. Coming number five is, yep, speaking about some more vampires, let's talk about From Dust Till Dawn. From Dust Till Dawn, again, Robert Rodriguez. This is probably, like, my favorite Robert, Robert Rodriguez film. It's got Quentin Tarantino, you got George Clooney, one of the best, most badass George Clooney roles ever. The beginning of this movie feels very Tarantino, and then it gets to be more of a Robert Rodriguez film when they get to the Titty Twister. Yes, the Titty Twister. Welcome to the Titty Twister, Cheech Baron. <laughs> Danny Trejo's in the film. You can't have a Robert Rodriguez film if you don't have Danny Trejo and Cheech Marin. Basically, the story is about these two guys. They're basically like killers and stuff, and they take this family hostage. And basically, they'll let them go if they can survive the night and get to Mexico and, you know, you know, meet up with their gang and stuff. And they go to this bar, this uh, From Dust Till Dawn bar called the Titty Twister, and then they realize this bar is full of vampires. And they have to survive the whole night killing all these vampires and try to get through the morning in time. So the family has to, you know, team up with the two psychotic killers played by uh, George Clooney and Quentin Tarantino, Seth and Richie, both awesome, the Gecko Brothers. And yeah, this is a really over-the-top, bloody movie, and it is awesome. Honey, I made you. It's a dark night. It's a dark night. I love this movie. I love the performances. Uh, Harvey Keitel and Juliette Lewis are also in this movie. And I love the characters. Again, the Gecko Brothers. You got Sex Machine. Come on, Sex Machine! <laughs> Such a great, really silly film, and it's just so much fun, and one of my favorite Robert, Robert Rodriguez films, and yeah, it's just a blast to watch. Coming number four is They Live. Yes, John Carpenter's They Live. Yes, Roddy Piper, Keith David. I love this movie. This is one of my favorite John Carpenter films. Very overlooked, pretty underrated film. This is just so enjoyable, so good. I love it. Basically, it's about this guy, he's almost basically homeless, and he basically starts, like, looking for work and stuff, but then he finds out, like, there's a government, like, conspiracy going on, that he finds these sunglasses, and when he puts the sunglasses on, he realizes that the Earth they live on is not what they seem. Basically, our planet's been taken over by, like, aliens and stuff, and they've disguised themselves as humans and stuff, and he can only see them with the sunglasses, and it's up to him and Keith David to save the world. You got Roddy Piper, you got Keith David. I'm here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. And this is just such an awesome, cool, badass film, and you gotta love it. It's They Live. Coming number three is Predator. Yes, get to the chopper! This is a great film. This is a great, this is a straight-up action film. But it is a horror film because it's the Predator. He's hunting these soldiers. It's Rambo meets aliens, and it's awesome. It's cool. It's sweet. It's John McTiernan returning as a director. That's awesome, as always. Arnold Schwarzenegger is in it. Carl Weathers is in it. Shane Black is in this movie. This is just an amazing film. This is just so much fun. It's badass. It's got cool action scenes, great direction, solid execution, well-structured story. It's terrifying. The Predator looks amazing. The practicality. This is the only great Predator film we've ever gotten, and it's the only one we'll probably ever get. Predator 2 sucked. The AVP films we never mentioned. Predators was eh, but still, this is the one truly great Predator film. It's got Arnold as Dutch. And it's just such an awesome film, one of the coolest films, one of the best action films, and hands down one of my favorite action horror films of all time. Coming number two is Train to Busan. Train to Busan just came out last year, I think, and this is such a great film, very overlooked film. I think this is a, I think it's a Korean film. Is it Korean? I think it's a Korean uh, zombie film. It's another zombie movie. This is amazing. I will not spoil very much about it, but it is incredible. It's one of the best zombie films I've ever seen. Ever. P 
period. This is one of the greatest zombie films I have ever watched. These characters are so realistic, so compelling, just so riveting. You're just, you, you can't but root for so many characters in this movie. There's a, there's a handful of characters that I love, and you just root for every single one of them. And when one of them dies, it, like, it is soul crushing. It, oh my god, your heart bleeds for them. And it is a very intense survival film. It's basically, it's all, it's these people all on a train, and they're heading to Busan. And, yeah, it, they get raided by zombies and stuff, and it's basically, they have to go through each train station, and all these sort of zombies are getting on the train, they have to get, they have to survive on this train to get to Busan, and survive all these zombies attacking them on the train, and it is a bloody mess, and it is a great survival film, and it's absolutely incredible. It is truly amazing, it's one of the best zombie films you'll ever watch, it's one of the greatest action horror films you'll watch, and it's just amazing. And my number one favorite action horror film of all time is, no shocker, it's Aliens. Aliens, it's Aliens. Alien, amazing, a better film in my opinion, a superior film, what really Scott did with it was fantastic. You never thought you could make a sequel to a brilliant film like that? Well, James Cameron thought of a way. Still, I, I, a lot of people consider this the best Alien film ever. I can totally see why. It's amazing. It's such a great action film. It's got, like, the, the James Cameron tropes. Like, uh, Alien has the really Scott tropes. This has the James Cameron tropes. You know, you got the army soldiers and stuff, the badass action scenes, and just the camera work. It feels like a James Cameron movie. And it's so great. It's so good. I uh, watch the extended cuts. Like, it's a better, it better cuts. It, it shows more about Ellen Ripley. shows the people more on LV-426 and stuff. And... I love it. I love this movie. I love uh, Ellen Ripley, Newt, uh, Hudson, and uh, Hicks, Corporal Hicks, Vasquez. I love these characters. They're such enjoyable, awesome characters. Bishop. Bishop's awesome. And Sigourney Weaver was even uh, nominated for this for Best Actress, which was very unheard of for a sci-fi film like this to get nominated for an Oscar. And it's a great movie. The relationship between Ellen Ripley and Newt is the, the heart of the film. And... But the the action is the soldiers kicking some ass, and even Ellen Ripley kicking some freaking serious ass. The action's fantastic. It's also a great survival film because they're all left on LV-426 with all the xenomorphs. You get to see the alien queen, which is terrifying, and it's just an all-around amazing film. It's still, Alien, in my opinion, is a better film, but Aliens is so freaking good and a great sequel. And probably, hands down, the best action horror film you'll ever watch, and it's my personal favorite. So yeah, that was my top 10 personal favorite action horror movies. So in the comment section below, comment section below, please tell me, did you agree with this top 10 list? If not, give me your top 10 personal favorite action horror films in your opinion. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.